watching any of my videos, you know that I've been semi-retired for quite a long time. I work, but I work when I want, about how much I want, and I work where I want to. I can kind of pick and choose what I want to do, and my job is not location specific. I can work as long as I have a computer, a phone, and internet access. So I can work anywhere in the whole world. I'm very, very, very lucky. But my husband, on the other hand, is way more location specific. He has an industrial shop that needs to be paid for. And so he needs to be into town working way more than I do. But recently he got an offer fingers crossed on the shop and although we have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops in order to make this happen we're going to try to jump through those hoops and see what happens and hopefully we can close the deal who knows but we're certainly going to try but that means that we'll have a little bit more money for our retirement nest egg and I want to ensure that we can take care of this nest egg very well. So in today's video, I want to talk about six different ways where people can have their retirement kind of thrown off the rails by different things that can happen, things that you may or may not have thought about. And hopefully that by bringing these to our attention, we won't fall into any of these traps. So I'm Maureen Dabransky. This is Life Starts at Retirement. I produce a retirement lifestyle video every Monday morning. So let's start. Trap number one, and really in no particular order, but trap number one is um, this concept of this trap really makes me lose sleep at night. But it's something that I've been working on over the years, and it's it's just really moving from a savings mentality to a spending mentality. That just freaks me out. It just gives me the willies. Let me explain. For most of us, we start our lives working, we're struggling to get by, we're acquiring things we need to live our lives, we buy a house, we have children, we get a car, furniture, so on and so on and so on. And our income typically comes from a job and increases over time so that we can start to save for a rainy day and start to save hopefully for our retirement. But now retirement is here. Holy cow, that's a scary thought. The concept of spending that retirement nest egg is so foreign to me or was. I'm, I'm getting somewhat better. But I've said this many, 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 many times. The first time that I took money out of my retirement account, I almost threw up. I was sick to my stomach. And I know, I know that's why we saved all these years so we could have a retirement. But I almost threw up the first time I took money out of our retirement account. So just moving from a savings mentality to a spending mentality is a tough thing. I encourage you to find that balance because you don't want to not enjoy your retirement, but you want to have enough left that when you're a little bit older, you can still enjoy your retirement. It's a unique concept, but really one that we have to adopt to. And just that it's really just maintaining your lifestyle versus building more of it. And it's scary, so yikes. Trap number two, and this is a big one for us. And that's been making sure we're both on the same page in this particular one financially. Because if Ken actually does sell his shop and we move almost exclusively to pulling income from our retirement sources, it scares the living daylights out of me. And so although we've had many, 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 many talks over the years, it's so important that we agree on how much we can spend and sort of where we can spend it within reason now that that time has arrived. And the closer you are to retirement, the more necessary it is to have this discussion. It's important to get these differences resolved or at least agreed upon or agreed to disagree and to work on them over time. It's really surprising and good how much you can get done once you put your views on the table and have a good discussion, not an argument, but a good discussion or two. Trap number three. This trap kind of goes hand in hand with number one and number two, and that's underestimating your retirement financial needs. Now, some people, maybe even most people, honestly only have a vague idea of what their needs will be when they 
retire or what their needs will be when they want their retirement vision. And some of that's definitely not our own fault. So we don't know how long we're going to live. We don't know how healthy we're going to be. We don't know if there's any unforeseen circumstances that will happen. So how can you plan for that and how can you have that vision? But the sooner you can begin to put a plan in place of what you do know, the best plan you can, without knowing every minute detail, the better off you'll be. So contact your financial planner, or if you're a do-it-yourselfer, like I am, then now's the time to do it yourself. <laughs> Trap number four, not understanding the cost of uninsured long-term care needs. Now, I saw a study recently that kind of worried me that said over 60% of people age 70 or older will have some type of long-term care needs. And this is something that my family is struggling with right now. My dad moved into a long-term care facility in December due to dementia. And it's not cheap. Even in Canada, it's not cheap. And it's not covered fully, at least in our case. It's not covered fully by the government. So I'm really not sure the best way to handle this sort of trap, if you will. And so I'm asking for your thoughts of what you've experienced. Do you think that you should get insurance, long-term care facility or long-term care insurance now while well, you don't need it so that it's there if you ever do need it? Do you have a different plan? Can you rely on the government where you are living? How, how do you see this? I'd love to hear for those of us, for those of you that have also gone through this, what you've done and how you're handling this so that it doesn't throw your retirement off of the rails. So something to think about. Trap number five, you don't change your money habits when you retire. So when that paycheck was coming in, you could spend and you knew exactly what you had every single solitary two weeks, but now you're pulling from your retirement funds and it might be that you need to change your spending habits. Do you still go out to eat three or four times a week? Can you still afford that? Do you still buy a car every two or three years? Can you still afford that? Or even something as simple as every morning on the way to work, when you used to, do you still go out and get your expensive coffee or latte every single morning? Can you still afford that? So I guess the moral of this trap is just to make sure that you think about this and if needed to change your habits. And then trap number six, beware of financial scams. There's so many of them out there. There really isn't a day that goes by that most people don't hear of some kind of a scam. A long lost prince in Saudi Arabia left you money. Um, I had somebody that said that they got a phone call and they were all worried because one of their grandchildren was said that they were stuck in some jail in some foreign country. Scams, 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 scams. My niece works at a bank and sees so many scams all the time. And so she posts on Facebook, she calls them Pam's scams to afford, inform us of them all the time. And some of them are pretty elaborate. You know, if these people used their brilliance and their thoughts for good instead of for bad, this world would be a great place. But the one that I see most of all, just due to this YouTube channel is someone will comment on one of my videos and I'll say, oh, wow, you know, this is a great video. Thank you, Maureen. Um, but boy, I sure turned $10,000 into $100,000 fast or something to that effect. And then um, some people will comment and say, wow, how did you do that? Oh, that sounds great. And then they'll go back and forth. The next thing you know, there's 50 comments. And next thing you know, it looks like this broker is the best broker in the whole wide world. So someone says, oh, can you give us the broker's name? And reluctantly, the person who originally made that comment gives you this broker's name. Now, I'm not saying this broker isn't good or isn't bad or isn't even legitimate or not legitimate. I have no idea. But that's not the way to get business. And chances are it's a scam. So do your homework and don't just look at the comments on a video. When I see those comments on a video of mine, click delete. That's not what this channel is for. So that's what's going to happen. But just beware out there because there's so many things. And so these are only six traps to be aware of when you retire, just to help you maintain your retirement lifestyle as long as you might need it. 
If you know of other traps or other things that you've heard of, I would love to hear them. Just comment below. And thank you. I'm Maureen Dabransky. This is Life Starts at Retirement. Again, I produce a retirement lifestyle video every Monday morning. And our Facebook group is growing. Please consider joining our Facebook group. Facebook.com slash groups slash Life Starts Retirement. Now go make your retirement remarkable.